Welcome everyone to another episode of Photographer's Favorites. Thanks so much for joining us. This is the show where I pick five favorite photos from other photographers and my guest picks five favorite photos and we just talk about everything we love about them. Today, I'm really excited to have Derek Cheneau with me. How's it going, Derek? Good. Hi, Ray. Thanks for having me. Yeah, sure thing, man. I really appreciate you. And you know, just to let everybody know, this was like a last minute one too. I'm trying to get a bunch of these uh, scheduled in before I go away. And I reached out to Derek the other day and he's like, yeah. And, I, and I'm like, can you do it tomorrow? He's like, yeah, let's do it. And, and you picked out some awesome stuff quickly. So uh, nice job on that. I appreciate it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, how's winter been treating you? Winter's tough. Winter's yeah. tough. Um, I'm ready for spring. I uh, saw my first blackbird last week and I heard a kill deer today. So things are starting to come back. Nice. So, it should be. Is this the blackbird right there? That was from last year, actually. But, okay. Uh, All right. Yeah, so. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. Listen, dude, you've been destroying it with these winter species, though. These pine grosbeak, the horn lark. I mean, look at that stuff. Gorgeous work, oh, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's just some really nice stuff. Look, the hoodie. Yeah. Awesome stuff. How did I miss this photo? That was in Florida, actually. I shot it through um, Spanish oh. moth yeah and it turned out really nice i really like that one it's probably my it's, favorite i got down there so it's very almost painterly like impressionist yeah, yeah. kind of look right yeah. well yeah. I, I just like the 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 actual orange just kind of almost looks like a flame you know so yeah it really great. does man that's awesome uh, just so right. it, yeah great stuff man uh, just so everybody knows where where do you reside in the country i'm in ohio i am okay. uh, about an hour south of lake erie cleveland area so okay all right. So Maybe your winter we're... is true winter. <laughs> yeah. Not as bad as some places, but we get snow and it stays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. C compared to me, like, I feel like we have like the most tame winter down here. Right. You know, everybody <laughs> locally is all, oh, it's all cold. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, like we have it pretty good. If yeah. we get snow in a year, it's like, oh, snow. I'm all excited. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> that's usually how it goes. Uh, all right, man. You ready to get into the show? Let's do it. All right, cool. Here we go. Uh, so we're going to start with the first one that you picked. Uh, an awesome image here from Kyle. Um, he had such an amazing year with this species, and I know he was really working it. And this one, I think, was, you know, in my opinion, anyway, one of his, the culmination of his work with that species this year. And uh, such a great example and use of taking advantage of an urban setting. And if you read the caption uh, for everybody looking here, he found this bird in an area with some Christmas lights in the background. And that just is such a great way to introduce some incredible bokeh back there. And on top of that, just a uh, great use of space here, great use of balance with this bokeh. Um, that's the other thing I really notice about this. The birds in its own space here, none of these bokeh balls are really intersecting it or kind of, you know, just, interfering with the bird itself they're just lovely placed around the whole left edge here and then a nice little balance of some berries on the top left there to kind of anchor that por portion of the frame at with some nice out of focus reds in the background so uh, color tones wise it just matches up the nice soft overcast light is perfect for the portrait and uh, the last little touch I see as like as I look at it longer is you can tell that bird was eating. There's so much junk on the, on the end of its bill, which is great. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so uh, great choice on this one, man. Yeah. Yeah. I love the, the bokeh balls. The bokeh balls are just fantastic. They, the berries shadows in them too. Like that's another cool. Aspect oh, nice. Yeah. But it's just the color scheme of this and just like the, it works. It's, it's like chaotic, but it works so well. It's not that's, messy at all. It's that's just a perfect like, description total chaos there but it's brilliant you know yeah so yeah i just love this shot so much yeah i think it is the kind of thing and and i struggle with it sometimes where when you're playing with some interesting bokeh balls like that in the background or sometimes in the foreground you know i think sometimes they can become overpowering and almost take over the subject especially if they're all around the subject and i've had images like that myself uh where i kind of question it and usually i just like to look so much i'm like ah screw it i'm gonna share it anyway uh but you're right this one it just it fits so well there. And, uh, yeah, that's really nice. Um, Derek, are you aware of how this kind of these shadows of the branches and berries and stuff happen in the bokeh like that? Am I, aware? I don't think so. Like, all I'm, right, I'm... cool. So, uh, I, I was going to, if you knew, I was going to ask you to describe, but, uh, yeah, fortunately I, I do know. Um, <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> so yeah, cause I think it's, it's fascinating to me. 
Uh, so this all comes from uh, foreground stuff. Uh, so usually what it is, is that there's probably branches really close either to the edge of the frame uh, or right in front that are so close to the, um, the front of the lens here that they're out of focus and we can't even see them. Okay. But uh, anything that blocks the lens from getting that bokeh light becomes a shadow in oh, the yeah. bokeh there. So uh, it's really interesting. So for example, if you're working on the edge of a, a lake or something, you got some cool bokeh and there's some grass in the foreground. If you take one or two or three blades of that grass and put it, I mean, right smack up against the lens, it's going to be so out of focus. It's not even going to affect the image, right? Mm -hmm. But it actually will appear as a sharp shadow in any bokeh that's in the image like that. Yeah, I, I think you've talked about this with your... Um... What was it your Dunlin shot, right? Yes. Yep. That, that's how you did this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's really neat. So actually having, you know, tiny things in the way create those cool patterns back there. And uh, yeah. it's a nice touch. So I'm glad you pointed it out. Yeah. I like it. I mean, and the, even the, the blurred berries in the background, like if they were even a little closer to the, the bird, you know, it, it kind of make it a little messy. I think they'd but be too much. You're right. It, it would be. Yeah. So like the, it's just a, like a splash of color in there. just added. Yeah. Matches the bird. It's perfect. Yep. Yeah, it works really well. All right. And, Let's move on to the next one. Okay. okay go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say, like, I just recently spent some time with this species for the first time. and Oh, no kidding. Yeah. So they're they're cool birds. Like, I've never seen one before, but they're they're a lot bigger than I expected. Are they? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You think, like... I've never seen like, one. I, like, I see pictures, and I think, like, finch size, you know? Me too. But yeah, I was totally they're expecting... Like, they're actually closer to, like, a blue jay size. They're oh, huge. no kidding. Wow. Yeah, they're monster, man. I just didn't expect it at all. Well, you know what? Now it's so funny. They don't have as much of a uh, a gross beak look as the other gross beak species. Right. I get rose-breasted yeah. gross beak and um, blue gross beak in my area. And yeah, rose-breasted gross beak are pretty chunky. Blues are a little bit smaller, but they're still decent sized birds. And so, yeah, but they look more finch-like with the shorter bill. They don't yeah, have that quite as big mm -hmm. a heavy bill. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I know. I'm glad you actually said to, that. I had no idea. Yeah, I just wanted to point that out because it was just like sh shock to the system when I first saw it. Dude, how often does that happen when right. you have never seen a species before and you're just like, what the heck? It's so fun. I take people out for belted kingfishers all the time. And over and over again, I keep hearing, I can't believe how big they are. I'm like, really? I, they, they seem kind of, I don't think they're that big, you know? I, but, I, I had the opposite happen with uh, Virginia rail. Like, I honestly... I had no idea they were so tiny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like if you see a Sora, you're like, are you kidding? Yeah. Like that's it? <laughs> that's, you know? that's what those pictures are? Wow. Yeah. That's funny, man. <laughs> All right. Here's our next photo. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's – uh. so, yeah, I think the starling in the urban setting is just perfect because that's yeah. where you always see them. Good point. And, I mean, the, the lights in the back – I mean, it looks like nighttime. Doesn't it? Yeah, but it works perfect because it's like the white on the the bird stands out like yep. with the bokeh balls in the background. It's it's really nice, and and it's not a species that you know I would ever even attempt to try. Probably I know <laughs> because they're so they're so common and invasive. But yeah, this really works. Yeah, yeah, I, like I very much agree. It's um, it's actually. Yeah. Full disclosure here. It's one of my mentorship students. Okay. And, um, oh, yeah, Susan. Yeah. yeah, she's, she's yeah. really good. Yeah. Yeah. She took this, she was just doing some backyard photography. And of course, you know, like you said, right. These, these birds are, it, it, it was funny for a while. She was describing them as nuisance. You know, they're just, they come <laughs> in and invade and they're, they're kicking all the good birds off the feeders and stuff like that. Um, and then she started to embrace them and she has a whole series of this species that I think are, quite fascinating. You know, I, I find them to actually be quite striking birds, you know? Um, and it's, uh, it is a shame that they're invasive, but you know, if we kind of can look past that for a second at just the, the look of the species, uh, there's a lot of character there. And especially if you get some light on with the iridescence. Um, yeah, yeah. Sure. But, but for me, like the, when I first saw this photo, it just screamed out just moody. Like it was yeah. just, so moody. Um, I love how you can just, you almost have to kind of get closer and dig your eye in to really kind of appreciate all the details going in. And you see the completion of the, the arch of that perch there um, and, and really just start to pick up on all these subtle things because it is kind of that dark, almost nighttime look, like you said. And Yeah, uh, like with the, with the blue coming in, like oh, I'm pointing at the screen, but yeah. with the blue coming in right there, it really does feel like nighttime. Like I yep. think that, that really makes it 
Yeah, yeah, I really agree. And it's a good color palette, right? Those complementary colors with the orange and blue always yeah. work so well together, you know? And on top of that, the head placement is perfect right in that bokeh ball. Because if the head or most of the body of this bird wasn't in those brighter bokeh balls, I think we would lose the the obvious shape of the spe of the bird and it wouldn't really stand out so nicely. Yeah. It's a good one. I like it. Yeah. Nice. All right. Next one we got. Oh, I remember seeing this for the first time a, a while ago, man. Um, the little foot down there makes it. It's just. It is. That, yep. that's, that's exactly it, right? what it is. <laughs> yeah. Without that, I mean, if we take that out, it's still a really cool wide angle shot, right? It's just neat to see this. It'd be neat to see underwater as well. But having that, and I think I actually like it better, though, since it's just one foot. I don't know if yeah. I'd like it as much with two feet. I mean, it'd still be cool, but um, something about the one foot to me just kind of indicates like the motion, like it's paddling with that foot, you know? Um, and just, I also like how everything underwater is not quite as clear. It's just a little bit more muted, not as crisp and sharp as it is on top. And um, incredible use of depth of field here too. Uh, it's a wide angle shot and we can certainly see the, the absolutely gorgeous habitat back there. There's some beautiful scenery, but it's kind of a little bit softer back there. So there's a little fall off on that uh, and really just makes the duck jump right out at you. And <laughs> I like his caption. Sometimes I take landscapes <laughs> with ducks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this, this guy is just too good. Like he's probably, he's yeah. one of my favorites for sure, but Agreed. I could have picked any one of his photos, but this one is just, uh, it's just so cool. Like I love Duck, ducks are probably one of my favorite things to shoot and there's a lot of good duck photographers out there but yeah it's just a different take on one and i just love it it's and the foot it's like it's, a, it's like a behavior you don't like really think about you see the duck just kind of scooting along on the water <laughs> you, you, yeah. you kind of forget that there's feet under there paddling yeah. along but then you see it as like perfect behavior shot perfect landscape shot everything it's it's awesome it really is. I love the uh, the subtle curve of the tree line back here, and it kind of just opens up perfectly to just fit the duck inside the tree, yeah. so we don't have like that tree line intersecting its head or anything like that. Yep. And and then the other thing is, I love photos like this where the longer you look at them, the more cool stuff you find out about them. I love how separated the foot is from the duck. It doesn't mm -hmm, even yeah. look like it belongs to it. Like that is a good distance right there that doesn't visually make sense. But of course, obviously with the refraction of the water yeah. and the way it works, um, that's how it comes out. But that makes it more amusing. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, it's it's almost like you have, if you didn't have the foot there, you'd almost have like two separate images. You're right. That foot brings the subject down into the whole image. It's, it's That's, yeah. That's perfect. It really is. That's a great connection to the underwater scene and how the duck, kind of is a part of that and relies on that as well yeah such a cool image and great light too on top of it love the little yeah. the little kiss of sun on the yep. distant mountains back there the clouds, like that's i mean this the yeah. shot with a blue sky would be fine but the clouds yeah, yep. i think make it even better so agreed yep yeah, great drama in that. So, yeah, it's such a cool image. <laughs> it, these are the shots that you see and you're like, I just, I give up. But I'm, mm -hmm. you know, why am I even trying? <laughs> I do that a lot with, I do that a lot with Chris, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same here. Yeah. And that's it, right? It's not just one offs from some people like this. I it's know. like constant, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Do you ever just stop? Give us all a chance. Oh, that's so great. Here you go. What do you think of that? One? Yeah. That's a cool one. <laughs> Man. Oh yeah. She's, she, she does the wild horses too. Yes. Right? Yep. So it's not like at a farm or something, you know? Correct. And yeah. So yeah, I've seen wild horses a couple times in the wild. And Have you? Yeah. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're like any That's other. It's gotta be animal. an experience. It is. It is. And, but again, being this close to one in the wild, it's, it would be intense. I think, I mean, yeah. just look at this. It's like, yeah, they're a big animal. Like any yeah. other big animal. You right. don't want to get too close, but yeah, those eyes. That's, yeah, just stare down the snow on top coming yeah. off the air. I assume it's snow. Yeah, it looks like it. Yep. Yeah, it does say yep. uh, <laughs> photographing in the snow. Either that or really bad dandruff. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, man. This is, this is awesome. I love the symmetry of this shot. It's almost like you could almost split it down the middle. If it wasn't for the little bit of snow that's different on each side, uh, it's it's a perfect mirror image. And how cool to have a horse that has the white line down the center, you know, like all, right. obviously all these different horses probably have different 
um, fur patterns and coloration and stuff like that. And this one works so absolutely perfectly uh, right down the middle like that. Yeah. And that little touch is, uh, I think that's what really just kind of pulls you in. And even the body is symmetrical in the back. You know, it's not, not yeah. too light no, or yeah, too dark yeah. on one other side. It's like, man, finding symmetry on your wildlife subject in the wild like that is so unbelievably difficult it happens so rarely to get things to line up just right like that yeah. and uh i mean most you know most wildlife with a head on shot is just difficult anyways but it's like yeah when you get something yeah. like this it just it's perfect i know yeah perfect depth of field too like you said you you go right into those eyes there's a great connection there the snow on the ground really helps to give beautiful catch lights in the eyes yeah uh, didn't notice to really that illuminate yeah, them sure. yep so and kind of a difficult move to chop like the end of the snout off right you know <laughs> like how many people would even think to do that all right yeah no. you know what i mean like yeah. i don't know that i would have had the nerve to do that and I think that's, uh, I think again, it's well done. It's, it's the right it choice in this image. It definitely works. Really it totally well. does. Yeah. Um, it's, I don't know that I've ever or very rarely cut off part of the uh, head of the subject. Now, obviously we work with, I tend to photograph birds, so they're much smaller. So that would be pretty hard to do more, more often, but um, yeah, it done, it's done so well here. It works perfectly. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that one. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Marianne, another one of my students, which is awesome. So I oh, love when she? you pick this oh, one. Yeah, I, yeah, definitely. No wonder she's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, she was good before she even came to me, okay. so I'm not no, even she, trying to take credit. Yeah. Uh, um, she crushes it, man. That's like, yeah. this, one, this one always just stuck with me, though. It, right. And this is another amazing example of taking advantage of your backyard setup, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, this was uh, a setup that she was working with some birds coming into the backyard. And I mean, does this say backyard to you at all? Not even a little bit. It, it just seems like a, a very cool wild photo. I mean, that's the thing. So many people, I think, when they start working with backyard birds are just kind of stuck in the, all right, let's just get standard light portrait kind of thing. And maybe they perch it up nice or something like that. Um, but th usually the lighting is still kind of pretty standard. But you know, this is an opportunity to really push an experiment. And she did that. She's using foreground elements here, uh, which really gives some depth to the photo. This lovely out of focus texture of, I'm guessing it's like a foreground pine uh, or branch or something like that is just such a nice detail. Just helps kind of give some really good character and texture to the image. And then the palette of the image as well. You know, just those nice golden uh, warm yellows and browns back there to complement the bird and then the bokeh balls are just beautiful so yeah and I, the bokeh balls are just it's just a gorgeous shot but yeah. it's almost like the uh the bird is actually looking up at them which is i kind of like that too that's good um but yeah the, the pine uh or grass or whatever it is like for a wintering sparrow it's just like the perfect setup <laughs> you know these yep. birds are allergic to open spaces it seems like so <laughs> it's yeah. just it just describes a wintering sparrow perfect like just coming out just a little bit head peeking out just behind the grass or the pine and it's like yep that's a that's a sparrow that's a junco yep. but uh, yeah i just this this shot is just magical i it's, it's, i'm going it's, back to you quite a few times and be like oh, yeah <laughs> it's great it's it's so often how we experience them just that little peek out of the the branch or something like that you know um uh, partially hidden and uh yeah it's a very very well done image love it something a little different okay yeah that's cool the 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 blur on the water is definitely the shot there i mean if you're just standing up above a pelican shooting like it's not going to be that great but this one yeah is, is well done yeah that those lines and textures that were created from the sh the the water it's really nice and to get yep. the bird in focus too <laughs> it's a yeah i mean that's awesome. this that's the thing that stood out to me this is a really really well done sharp pan shot you know yeah. usually you don't get them that clean so uh, incredibly well done one fortieth of a second wow yep I mean, that's, <laughs> that can be hard to get a stationary yeah. subject in focus sometimes yep. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever messed with uh, panning blurs like that? No, I haven't. I know. Okay. Um, it's not something that, you know, when I, when I'm out there, <laughs> I hate to say it, but when I'm out there, it's just like, 
Okay. It takes me forever to actually like just figure out what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> and I'll try to get a shot of what I want. It's like, yeah. I first see a cooperative subject and I was like, you just go for it, yeah. Machine gun it down. It's like so no. And Okay. And I don't think uh I guess yeah, I mean I've been in situations where I probably could have tried, but I have yeah. not. This is not something that would pop in my brain like that. Um It's the kind why. of thing that I only do when I have subjects that I've either photographed a ton or the other conditions just mean that no other photo is gonna be great. So like you the first thing you pointed out about this shot. If this shot taken with a normal, you know, bird and flight shutter speed, thousandth, two thousandth of a second is not going to be a good shot. All this water texture down here is just going to be in focus. There's no separation on the background. It's just going to be distracting. The light is kind of flat, you know what I mean? But yeah. all those things are what make this shot work as a panning blur. You know, that flat light means there's no crazy harsh uh, shadows or hot spots anywhere. It allows the photographer here, you know, Harry was able to get that slower shutter speed that is almost impossible to get if it's really, if you have bright sun or something like that. And, um, yeah, I love exactly what you said. Those, those lines back there, it's such a sense of motion in this that just gives you the feeling of like, I just love watching these birds fly over the water and they, when they yeah. glide so low and, and how cool that even in this pan blur with the, the <laughs> ripples in the water, you can still see some of the, the shadow right. and almost yeah. reflection of the bird under there, especially those wingtips right there. Um, I think that's such a nice little subtle touch and uh, bonus, nice adult, you know, breeding plumage pelican. He's like clean looking. He's not like one of the, uh, you know, the bummy juveniles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I had a blast just watching the pelicans dive, you know, out of the water. They're, they're so goofy and funky, but. Oh, aren't they? Um, I guess but, to um, the panning shots though, like a lot of them you see even like, most of the animal is even blurred too, but this you're right. One is yeah. Completely sharp somehow. Yep. So yeah. Well, really and I good. think that he got that from right. one of their flight characteristics, which is when they get low like that, their wings are just motionless. So yeah. They're just gliding. Right. Cause most yeah, other birds, point. when we're shooting them, they're all flapping and moving and you know, so yeah, it yeah, worked Harry, out really good. Yeah. Harry's oh yeah. Good. Yeah, definitely. Oh man, when you sent this one, <laughs> you know what? I, this is not an image I had seen previously, so this oh, really? is kind of yeah. This is my first time seeing it, and I didn't really, you know, when you sent it, I just kind of screenshot it, put it in, ready to go, and I didn't really uh, spend too much time with it. But um, it is. Um, I think it's 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 quite old. It's, I think it's from two two or three years ago, but okay, it's just always stuck with me. <laughs> I think it's the yeah. first one I've, I've ever seen from him, and that's what you know. Yeah. Maybe. Awesome photographer, you know? Yeah. Oh, such, good, yeah. such a great photographer. Um, the light on this is it's so about the light, the soft spotlight that exists here, um, is what makes it, I think, you know, this with like a hard beam of sun coming in on it, I think doesn't make the mood right. You know, I think yeah. it really requires the softness just because of the species, right. That just, the slow moving species. And then that, that moment, uh, between having the, the young yeah. one just kind of tucked right in there, the baby, uh, underneath the adult head there. just a little bit, yeah. just incredible. And then the little, I think tail right there of the young one, or maybe the it leg or a, something might be a foot. Yeah. Yeah. Leg. I don't know. They're so weird looking. You can't tell what's what, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, excellent use of the dark canopy around it. I love that everything we can see it. It's not mm -hmm. just blacked out here. You can see this habitat, but none of it is distracting. It's also, you know, kind of toned down just because it's a darker green foliage and the way that light's coming in from the overhead like that, um, works well. And like, I have to imagine, I feel like I, I'm just trying to place myself there you know, most likely this thing wasn't, you didn't just walk up to the scene and see it with the, the left arm low and the baby's head <laughs> peeking. Like then it probably started another way. I mean, if it, if he did walk up and just see that and that was the first shot, then that's the most amazing luck ever. Right. But I can just picture being there like, wait, like, come on, move your arm. Come on, move it just right. I need to see the baby. And then like, because this position with the left arm down, right arm up is just so perfect. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I mean, like, I don't know anything about like the background of the shot. It could have been, you know, driving down the road, seeing it, but True. when you see it, it, it takes you right to the jungle. I mean, you're right yeah. in there with it. And, and, and a sloth, I mean, how many photos of sloths do you see? You get two in one shot with a baby. <laughs> like, come I on. Know. Yep. It's just so good. Plus like, I just love the, uh, 
the algae growing on the, the fur like that. that yeah. So. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. That's a nice touch. Um, and then if we start talking about lines in this photo, yeah. beautiful curve coming right here. Uh, another curve. vine pointing here. Well, These lines going the other way, but frame it in. Um, these pointing right in curving that way, this kind of anchoring that space, like just graphically and compositionally, everything works so well in this image. The, the one thing I noticed was that curved vine and the sloth almost has the same exact curve to it. So with the back right there. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Those little details like that, make a foot that those are the pieces that take a photo from like, Oh, that's a great shot to, Oh my gosh. You know, yeah. <laughs> like when all those things start working together that way. And I think that's the kind of thing that happens subconsciously. I think you see a photo and you're just wowed by it. And until you kind of sit with it long enough, which yeah. is why I love doing what we're doing right now. Um, mm -hmm. You don't really consciously become aware of those, those little pieces, those things that we're talking about now that really pull this photo together and elevate it to the next level. And being conscious of them is a good thing because then you can maybe start to look for that the next time you're out in the field shooting and trying to, you know, capture something as amazing as this. Wow. Nice yeah. Oh man. So, so many, <laughs> yeah, there's so many elements to this one. It's just crazy. Like yeah. the pebbles, the, the water, the, the grass, like I love the grass that it's, you know, somewhat in focus. I mean, it yeah. just really sets the scene to the, what is it? A pine warbler. Yeah, it is. Yes. Oh yep. man. Yeah. Yeah. And pine, pine warbler is one that has evaded me. So that's uh Oh really? Yeah, yeah. I guess that makes sense. You don't, that's not real common up by you, is it? I think we have some nesters. I okay, I was, but I haven't found any yet. So gotcha. Um, but yeah, this is great. This is uh, and it's oh man, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a good one. The colors, the um, the the whole setting, and uh, it's pretty cool. This is this is uh, Bill's one of his uh, his backyard setups actually. Oh okay. Um, yeah, so he he's got a nice water feature set up and brings birds in. And, uh, you know, how cool when you're in Florida that this is one of the species that'll do that. <laughs> yeah, no you know? kidding. yeah. Yeah. We were talking about it earlier, just how great Florida is for photography. And <laughs> right. yeah, this is a, a perfect example of like, you know, I mean, I know pine warblers will hit, uh, feeders and stuff like that, but in my area, that's not happening, you know, right. I, or yeah. very rarely, I should say. Um, uh, of course this also could have been rare for him for, to have it come in like that. I don't really know, but, um, it's such a beautiful setup, clean setup. Like you said, that grass pop back there of the color is really good. Yet the bird still stands out perfectly. And, and um, I like I like how you can see the top of the grass up top too, because it kind of gives perspective on the size of the bird. So totally, I yeah. like that. Pat. That's a great point. Yeah, and that just great use like the foreground blur on the rocks yeah. here. These being just a little soft and and just the roundness of them as well. Like it's such a great scene, you know. And it doesn't look like set up at all. Like it looks. It looks very natural. So it's not like one of those, it's not overly set up where you look at it and it just screams like, oh, that was like, you know, a stage set up and everything. Cause yeah. no, I, I've not totally at all. seen I that and done that. <laughs> I would have never guessed that was a, you know, a backyard thing. I, yeah. yeah. It, it looks like he's cool. laying in the swamp. I mean, I've right in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. Uh, but it's, a, it's such a well put together shot. It really um, is. Yeah. I, I just, the angle of this rock that it's yep. on coming down into there is such a nice kind of just kind of juts you right into the shot too uh, i really like that yeah and how many warbler shots do you really see with water anyways like there's not You're right no no that's one of the fun things i always love about working with uh, water thrush species is you know they kind of live in and around yeah. the water yeah. so that's one of the unique things about them is you just get to really incorporate it because outside of that it's not often that you get to see them you know which I assume they all have to drink and probably bathe and do stuff like that. So like, man, wouldn't that, I'd yeah, love to get, you know, it happens, but <laughs> not yeah, in front of me. exactly. I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Josh Galicki got a shot once of a black Bernie and bathing. Um, yep, I remember that one. Oh, such a cool shot, man. Yeah. Yep, that one that always stood out one. to me. I'm like, nah, screw you, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I say that a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, wow. Absolutely. Wow incredible scene yeah i've talked about this 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 topic has come up a few times on this show when looking at photos of the concept of having an amazing scene with no wildlife in it and then uh 
adding that wildlife to just take it completely and utterly over the top. Um, this is great. And, and one of the things, a perfect example of one of the things that I personally love about really well done silhouettes, especially when they're more scenic is the brightest spot in the image is right behind the subject, you know? Uh, so yep. it's like, you know, I think it's kind of well known that as, as humans, and when we're viewing a photo, our eyes tend to get drawn to the brightest spot in an image. So when you're doing a silhouette like this, having, you know, if it was like super bright sky up here, I feel like that would pull my eye up there initially. Uh, and instead my eye goes, I mean, immediately to this, uh, I don't even know what the, the deer is there. If nope. it says, yeah. Um, yeah, but love that it's, uh, you know, got antlers too. So you get that, that whole shape of the deer there. Um, it fits perfectly. Even the arch of the back kind of matches the arch of this, uh, this opening in the light there. And then man, the angle of this kind of river or whatever, just kind of just leads you right back into some incredible mountains back there and scenery. And it's like, man, like insanely well done. Yeah. Um, I mean, to start it all off before you even get into the photograph, like the presentation of it, no caption whatsoever. Like, yeah, I know nothing about this photograph, but I could stare at it for days. Yep. Like, it's just so good. Like, I have no idea what the deer is, but I love how the deer is, you know, the, the mountains up in the right, uh, the right hand corner up the top, you know, are, you know, layered light. You can see them not dark like everything else. And the yeah. deer is just headed straight for them down the river. Yeah. Like I love that part of it. And then if you start digging into it, there's, you know, there's either duck or geese in the water too. It's, Something. Yep. it's just so much to look at. It's such a good shot. Kevin's a really good photographer. I really like his work. And, yeah. It's um, fun. I have a few of his set aside for uh, future episodes. And when you, you sent this one, I'm like, all right, let's, well, I won't do two in one, <laughs> but yeah, incredible yeah. stuff. And, and this is definitely indicative of his style. You know, uh, I certainly see this kind of yeah. style a lot yeah. in his photography. Um, and understandable why because he does it so incredibly well but i mean I, like, I really like this one if we look at the size of the subject compared to the entirety of this photo it is minuscule but i mean your eye i can't stop looking at it like it just your eye is drawn right to that subject over and over again so yeah. it's so cool that it can be that tiny yet that obvious in the shot yeah you know? uh, i mean That's on that same line oops sorry um on that same line whatever that species is, you know, it's huge. I mean, even the yeah. tail here are huge. Yeah. So like the scene has to be just a monster, beautiful, exactly. gorgeous scene, but like just portraying it this way with just the river, with a few I mountains know. in the range in the background and then the deer. Yeah. That work. It's just so and, good. Well, and such an interesting choice of use of negative space here. Uh, I feel like my first instinct would be to put the river towards the bottom here and then have all the sky up there. Yeah. But then going to the first point I mentioned of if we had a ton of bright sky up there, I think it would be visually distracting. It would be pulling your eye away from the subject over and over again. Uh, and where here he included just enough to give mm -hmm. the indication of the habitat and see that horizon line. I think that's important. It is because that's a nice touch back there. Uh, but you know, he composed it in a way that just all this black space and it doesn't detract. It feels balanced. It still yep. just works so well. Yeah. Completely agree. Impressive stuff. <laughs> Very <laughs> impressive. All right. Last image. Okay. Keeping it all small. All right. <laughs> Kingfisher, right? Yeah. It looks like yep. it. Okay. Adirondacks. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, this is, uh, I mean, I can just, I can be there on this pond mm -hmm. in the morning with the fog coming up, you know, on a, whenever it was, feels like a yeah. fall morning. But, and that's the usual view you get of a kingfisher before it yep. flies away, just real far away and, and then it's gone. Yeah, yeah totally. I, I, I immediately knew what it was. So that, that isn't that worked. cool? Yep. And then the rocks is a great perch for it. Yeah. So yeah. This is a good one. I just met Letitia the other, like a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago. Um, she's from France, but it been in America for a while and uh, I think either already back or headed back. But anyway, uh, she ended up doing a workshop with me for waterfowl. Okay. So I, I met her for, through that. And uh, as soon as I hopped on her Instagram, I was saying goodbye to her and we we're just exchanging uh, Instagram, you know, so I could check her out her work. And as I pulled it up, I'm standing right there and I'm like, 
can I use this photo on my show? <laughs> like it just jumped out at me. I was like, that is a killer Kingfisher photo. Um, the, the, whole, like you said, the atmosphere, it just, it brings you in. You can just feel that, that warm air, the quietness, probably hear the, the, uh, the screaming of that Kingfisher taunting you that you can't get yeah, close right. to it, you yep. know, as they love to do. Um, but again, a, a matching example to what we just looked at in that super tiny in the frame but you see it right away your eye goes right there and i love that you mentioned you can tell the species without even being told what it is and uh yeah that fog makes the shot i think without yeah. that it doesn't work that well and probably without that you don't get this little brightness back here that kind of really helps to set that little kingfisher off back there so yeah, yeah. really well done image I, I really liked it so well done, dude. That was an imp. That was a, uh, yeah. that was a show. So cool. yeah, that was fun, yeah. man. It I really was. It. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. any plans coming up? Any, uh, interesting uh, shoots? No. Um, <laughs> the ice should be melted. So I'm hoping ducks will start coming in. So I'm getting, so you haven't had any ducks for a while. Everything froze up. We have ducks, but they're like on the huge lakes, you yeah. know, in the middle where there's open water. I gotcha. haven't found a place. When is this cold to actually shoot them? But yeah, that should be coming be up in the next week or two. I'm hoping so. Nice man. Yeah. Numbers, but. How long do you usually have them around before they've all kind of like pushed north? So last year was really my first year shooting ducks, and we were seeing them um, probably I want to say late April, mid April. Okay. We still have pretty good numbers. Late April. You know, nice. we're, we're starting to linger a little bit, but okay. we have a couple nesters that are pretty, you know, uh, they're pretty skittish when they're nesting, but. Every duck is skittish all the time for me. I know. <laughs> they can be so frustrating, but so rewarding at the same time. They really are. Yeah. Do you have yeah, any so. species in, spe in uh, specifically that you want to work with this year that maybe you haven't had as much experience with or that you're just hoping um, to expand on? Well, my buddy pointed me to this uh, spot that in the fall, this past november-ish had a ton of ruddy ducks in it oh I'm just hoping they come back in the breeding tool plumage just to, yeah oh man it's just the perfect i mean you can set up in all kinds of different ways it's the perfect pond to get them on and i mean there were oh, probably, nice. i mean there's probably 30 of them there and they were not they, they were the most uh cooperative duck i've worked with so okay yeah and uh are they doing the display that time of year no no okay but no but and they're still they're a great all, duck yeah, it's a, such a cool duck. The way they dive, their feathers fan out like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they're all brown. They're all brown in the in the, yep. like the, the fall. So I'm hoping they yeah. come back with the bright blue and get that bright blue stuff. bill. Yeah, man. I know. And then, and then the hoodies. Ducks. Those are my favorites for sure. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm supposed to go out for them on Wednesday and maybe Friday again. So yeah. Um, but they're gonna be leaving us soon. You know, like that's we yeah. know how much longer, and all these ducks are gonna be. Go yeah, on, so, so you guys you guys get them all winter and then we yes. get them on the tail end back up there and then Yep. Yeah. It's amazing how different areas just work differently like that and just the timing yeah. and everything. It's yeah. so wild. I, I got a good schedule for my area except for winter. Winter is just a dead zone, but Gotcha. Eh, we made it through it. I actually just traveled last week, so that was good to get away. So Nice man. Excellent. Excellent. Well, listen, good luck with those ducks when they all come up. I look forward awesome. to seeing what you uh, get there. And as always, man, uh, love seeing your photography. So thanks for joining me on this one. Hey, thanks for having me, Ray. I really appreciate it. Sure thing. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Please do me a favor and share this out with your friends and fellow photographers. That definitely helps keep these going, get more viewers on them. And I'll see you guys on the next episode.